In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use an ordinary alternating current motor like this. And in this case, this has brushes. Now, you can use a motor that has brushes or you can use a brushless motor like a lot of your swimming pool pumps and washing machine motors and stuff like that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my cordless drill. It's going to spin at a high speed the corded AC drill. And when it does that, it's going to produce electrical current, which is going to light this bulb right here. That's a 40 watt lamp. You'll see the voltage readout come up on the DMM. And in order to accomplish this, I'll be using these three capacitors wired in series. Each one is 100 microfarads. These are run capacitors. You do not want to use start capacitors because you may blow them. So make sure it's a run capacitor. There's like a mineral oil in these to keep them cool and they're designed to handle more current than a, run, than a start capacitor. So each one is 100 and they're in series so I'm getting roughly 30, 33 microfarad. And you're gonna have to experiment with the values for each motor that you intend on using because a motor like this only requires maybe 20 or 30 microfarads whereas a swimming pool pump that's a one horse or one and a half will probably require 200. Now what you want to do is you want to find the least amount of capacitance that's required to get the voltage to build within the AC motor you're trying to use as a generator. Now the way to do that you're going to take your capacitors I got these online I think I paid six dollars a piece years ago for them these are one hundreds so you start out with 100. You spin the drill fast, or you could use a, a gas engine to spin it. And then you're going to see if it comes on and you get a voltage reading. If spinning it at the nameplate rating on the, in this case, the drill, if you spin it at that speed or a little higher, it should begin to produce electricity to light this bulb right here. If it does not, that means you're not using enough capacitance. The reason why you need the capacitors is because inside the drill is a little bit of residual magnetism that's left inside the armature in this case. On a pool pump you'd have just a rotor. So there's a little bit of magnetism in there. And what the capacitor does is allow that magnetism and current to build to produce the current. So if you don't have enough capacitance, it will not build. If you have too much, you're going to put an excessive load on the drill in this case and it'll still work but it's going to be harder to turn the shaft of that motor because you're, it's causing an increased load by having the excessive capacitance so you only want to use enough capacitance to get the voltage to where you need it, the 120 and you also want to make sure that the cycle is right which is 60 hertz 50 to 60 will probably be fine but 60 hertz so if you're putting out roughly 120, 125 volts when you spin this, then you should be pretty much at 60 hertz. All right, so I'm going to do a little demo right now. So you want to use as low a value as possible to achieve the 120 volt output with the induction motor that you're going to choose to use for a generator. So right now, this doesn't spin fast enough to give me the full 120 volts, but it will put out about 85 volts when I spin this. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. You will see the digital multimeter go to 80, 85 volts, and you'll see the 40-watt lamp start to light up. As you can see, we peaked out around 86 volts with my cordless drill spinning the other drill. If you were using a gas motor or anything else, you would have no problem achieving the full 120 volts. Let's take a look at the frequency. Now, if you, for a light bulb, it doesn't make a difference, but if you're going to run electronics and motors, you want to make sure the frequency is pretty close to 60 hertz. So, point 
this is in kilohertz, so 0 0.060 is 60. So because we're only pushing out 86 volts, the cycles are going to be less than 60. So let's take a look at that. Here we go. Around 17, 18 versus 60. So in order to get that 17, 18 to go up to the 60 cycles, you have to speed up the drill faster and faster to make the voltage go up to 120, 125, and then you'd also see the reading go up to right around 60 hertz. So how this is going to work, you've got the AC induction motor. It could be brushless or have brushes like my drill does right now. You're going to position the capacitor between both leads leaving the motor. You want this to be roughly twice the value of the voltage that's heading out, so that's 120 going out. So you want to have a 240, I'm using a 370 volt capacitor. You want to choose the proper size. You want to use as low as possible, but still get the output that you need. You also have to realize that this does not come out 120 on one leg and neutral on the other. It's 60 volts per leg. So you're going to have 60 and 60, which doesn't make a difference to anything that you're going to operate. But this is something that you can't connect to your house. Uh, you have a neutral line in your panel, and then you have a bus bar, which is hot. So you just can't put 60 on the neutral and 60 on the bus bar, so it's not going to work. This is good for just a portable generator. Now, you could also run motors, which I've done before. I had a sprinkler pump, which was one horse and I was running small motors with no problem whatsoever and the way you're going to do that you leave this capacitor alone and on one leg after the capacitor all right you're going to put more capacitors right here and you're going to parallel them so you might want to put a 100 microfarad right there and then you might want to add another one in parallel to get 200 and you keep adding enough so that you're able to start to overcome the surge to start that motor and then run it. It will work. You just got to play around with the values.